This is Late to the Party, episode four. Welcome to Late to the Party, episode four. This is the Geeks Unleashed monthly book club podcast, in addition to our weekly podcast, where we work through what are considered some of the most essential graphic novels of all time. I'm Mark. And I'm Jasmine. We're also joined by our guest host uh, this month from Los Angeles, the author of various novels, including the Entrantious Trilogy and CEO and co-founder of The Stigma Fighters. Uh, Welcome, Ali Burke. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Did you have a good New Year and Christmas? Yes, yes it was very good. Um, it was, you know, because of the pandemic, it was quiet, but <laughs> good. there were fireworks outside for New Year's, so I didn't have to go anywhere, which was nice. <laughs> did you get to see that from your window or did you have to go outside? Yeah, I saw it from my window. <laughs> <laughs> did you get anything nice as well, though, for Christmas, even though it was a pandemic? Uh, yeah, I did. I got my brother got me this really cool ceramic teapot. I, oh. I drink tea, so um, that was nice. And uh, my dad's annual gift card to Amazon. That's what he gets me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Can't oh. go wrong with that, though. Oh, no. I, I, I'd be I, I'd be happy with gift card or money. Uh, <laughs> it allows me then to go and get the graphic novels or whatever it is that I want. Yeah. So. <laughs> What about you, Jasmine? Did you get anything nice? Uh, I asked for bakeware. So I got a springform pan so that I can make cheesecake. And I got some <laughs> donut pans, which I actually tried out a donut recipe yesterday. Um, so yeah, I have uh, I guess baking and cooking has been my kind of go-to activity during all of this pandemic stuff, in addition <laughs> to reading more comics and, and that kind of stuff. So I asked all my family to get me comics or graphic novels, which I've not been allowed to see because obviously in the UK, current lockdown, I'm not allowed to see anybody outside my own house. But um, well, my wife and uh, my kids did get me a couple of video games for the PlayStation. So uh, I did get The Last of Us Part 2, which is amazing. So um, and a couple other bits as well. But Last of Us is so good. I started playing that over Christmas. Do you, but that's not something you play with your girls, is it? Oh no, obviously not. <laughs> like, like, I can't play The Last of Us with my girls. Like, so, um, no, they got me Tomb Raider, uh, the third one, the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. that looks a fun what, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I think you can kind of play with them. There's some moments in there that's not appropriate, but yeah. generally, generally, it's a little it's scary okay. towards the end. But other than uh, that, I think it's okay. I decided to start playing The Last of Us Part Two first, so but I can only play that at night. Um, so, and then playing it at night creeps me out anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so we'll crack on with our fourth episode of Late to the Party. So, as Jasmine said at the beginning, uh, Late to the Party is where we go through what is what what is considered by a lot of other people essential graphic novels where me and Jasmine put our hands up and admit we've been out of touch and that's why it's called Late to the Party. Uh, we've rocked through three episodes already where we covered Mouse, Fee for Vendetta and the first volume of Scott Pilgrim and we've seen Monstrous on a lot of people's lists. Um, the writer for that is Marjorie Liu who has written various things, X-23, Dark Wolverine. And I don't know if you know both both of you that she used to be a lawyer as well uh, before she got into writing. Um, she um, was joined by the illustrator, uh, Sana Takadi. Uh, Take- 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 Takeda. Takeda, oh, I'm terrible. Uh, who drew, coloured and did the cover art for this and has also done work with her as well with Miss Marvel, Civil War um, and on X-23 together. So just a little bit of facts here. Uh, this is originally published in 2015 by Image Comics, originally in single issue format. And for the sake of this review, we're reviewing the first six issues which were collected together in the first volume called Awakening. Uh, it's originally collected in July 2016 and has won so many awards, honestly. Um, so so it won the Hugo Award and British Fantasy Award in 2017 for Best British Graphic Novel. The comic has also won Eisner Awards and um, other awards for, for Best Writer and Best Painter as well. So I mean, it's just you know really well thought of and really well recognised. Um, I don't normally do this at the start of our reviews, but I thought it's worth 
mentioning that this book, how vast it is in terms of its world building, that the amount of different races and, and characters that are in this book. Um, so the races itself that we're into just in volume one, I don't know if we'll meet further races down the road, but we're introduced to the ancients, which are animal-like in appearance, um, Arcanics, which are kind of a hybrid of human and ancients. Um, another race, which I think is cool, is the cat race, which um, uh, referred to also as well as necromancers, and then humans, and then the old gods. The old gods don't really have so much of an impact in volume one. Uh, your main character as well is Maker Half Wolf, and there's a variety of other characters as well that we'll meet and we'll talk about as the book goes on. Um, what I want to say at the beginning, though, of this is when reading this and we'll probably talk about it and cover different topics as well you know sort of a slight trigger warning here the book is not for young people it's definitely an older audience and includes themes of slavery brutality and trafficking um throughout its book and and in fact it's quite sort of sort of dark and gory in places and I was looking through some of the artwork earlier um I showed my wife some of it and she was quite shocked by it I was trying to show her the detail of the art and um and then she saw some of the pages she's like wow I was like yeah I know um so yeah um I kind of just wanted to set the scene in terms of this book but um rather than me saying much more I'd be interested Ali to hear sort of your point of view first of all uh yeah I I absolutely was mesmerized by this this story, this multi-layered story of war. Um, it's certainly for fans of like strong female characters, but I would agree with you, Mark, that this graphic novel is certainly for an older audience, um, not something you want to read with your kids or anything like that. Um, it's, it's a really dark story with lots of layers of characters and plot points to discover. I would think that the reader could benefit from a little bit better explanation of the ancients and arcanics and their roles in the story. Um, I feel like I myself could benefit from reading it again before continuing on in the series. But beyond that, I'd recommend this book to anyone who really likes the dark, fast paced stories with beautiful artwork. Yeah, I, I was saying that to Jasmine just before you came on actually was I haven't read this once it's just so much in there it's very complex and there's a lot lot of information in there and probably I, i'm hoping that as you go on through volumes two and three that some of this world will become more explained but you're you, they kind of i guess she was trying to cover multiple goals in the first volume introduce you to the main characters and the world the setting and build up a cast and there was a lot to do and a lot lot in there and i think by the end of it i think my brain probably did hurt a bit reading this um i kind of did flick back a little bit afterwards um just to sort of read some of it back again and i was like ah, oh, okay some of this makes a little bit more sense but I, I didn't have time for a second read before we recorded but um, it's one I would be keen to reread before I went on with volume two and three. Um, it's, it's the world building is, is immense. It's, you know, it's kind of set in this steampunk sort of alternate East Asia world. I think it's sort of 19, meant to be sort of early sort of 19th century, alternate 19th century. Uh, and like you say, it's set after a world that's been torn apart by war and you are introduced to all these different races and cultures. Um, it's just so much so the, the way i was trying to compare it was as if it was sort of a game of thrones or lord of the rings type type world uh, that was something that came across very similar to me uh, especially at the end where there's a map of the of the world um and it, and it shows the sort of the wall divided um so you start at the start of this uh, story in the city of uh, zamara um and you kind of a flashback a little bit um for mako and she shows what she um has done to get her to that point um but yeah it was extremely complex but i, I did it didn't mean that i didn't enjoy it i just found found the book quite a, not an easy read but one that i still enjoyed it was a challenge it was challenging probably the best way to describe it what about you jasmine um i at reading the book to me it felt familiar i i, I mean i did not know the story ahead of time but i think uh jokingly i i said earlier that it kind of reminded me of when I played Skyrim um <clears throat> like the the world building in here is very reminiscent to me of the way that RPG video games start out they start out you've got all mm -hmm. these different races obviously something terrible happened and one 
doesn't like the other, but you don't quite know the full story as to why. Um, so when I was reading this book, I actually read it all in one sitting. Um, I flew through it probably in about an hour and a half. And I, I mean, it just like, I felt transported into this world. So my, my first thought was, oh my God, I really need to pick up the second volume. Uh, but it definitely felt like sort of like the, that first intro, that first few hours that you put into a video game where you don't know the story, where you're figuring out the mechanics and you're figuring out how your character has to, you know, toe the line between this set of people and that set of people. Uh, so I, I loved it. I love the way that they introduce the characters. I love that this book doesn't shy away from violence. A lot of times <clears throat> it's, it's, it's almost like it's a boys club, right? So like in the comics, only the, only the men get to have all the fighting and, and get to do all the violent stuff. But the women in this book are the ones that are like raising hell and wreaking havoc. And, and I, I think it's awesome. Um, and one of my favorite things so far is that the main character, uh, Micah, she, she's not perfect. Um, she, she sort of reminds me of Frank Castle, <laughs> uh, like the way that she kind of rolls through this first volume where she does some questionable things and definitely does some things that make you go, mm, uh, good, bad, it's hard to tell. Uh, but I think by the, by the time we get to issue six or book chapter six, um, you can tell that her her morality meter has sort of shifted into the uh, more on the good side, so to speak. Um, so even just the character development that you get in the first six issues, uh, it's the the story and the world that is created here is so deep that it's just it's it it's natural. Like I can't wait to figure out what happens next. Like I'm I'm so curious as to how the court of dusk plays into this and and how the arcanic and the you know the um the oh, what are the other people called <laughs> the ancients thank you how like how they all fit together and i'm i'm very very intrigued uh so i i loved it i i literally couldn't tear my eyes away from it um my dinner actually got cold because i was trying to eat dinner <laughs> and read this at the same time and uh that did not work out for me so <laughs> Well, what, what do you think about obviously like either of you just sort of the, the the themes that are in this like I mean when you open it up I mean the first first page you know you're presented with essentially a naked woman and then you turn the page again and this naked woman is surrounded by essentially a bunch of sort of fat old men who are bidding on a woman and for this being quite high-end fantasy steampunk I, I was quite taken back that straight away we're introduced to slavery and sex trafficking and um in essentially what is you know a graphic novel and don't always find graphic novels always approach those type of type of themes i think it's it's interesting that no matter what time period no matter how far into the future or how fantastical a realm we're set in it's these books all still kind of have the books the films everything they all have the same kind of theme where there's always one set of people that believes that they should be above another set of people and um there's there's actually i i ear a dog eared it <laughs> like i put post-it notes all through this book so um there's one sequence at the toward the end of the book between kippa and uh ren where they're they're sort of going back and forth about whether or not to go and help uh whether or not to go and help micah because she's been taken and Ren is like, no, 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 no. That's not my job. Like I've, I've gone as far as I'm going to go and I'm done with it. And Kippa, Kippa is the little Fox girl. And she's like, no, she's our friend. Like we should go and help her. And the, and like, it gets, it gets pretty deep and like emotional toward the end because she's like, you say that she's different and that we shouldn't help her because she's different. But the thing is like the people that are oppressing us, they don't care about our differences. Like once we're in cages, we're all the same to them. So we don't, there, there is no discernible difference once, you know, this other race of people that once the humans get involved, like the humans see all of us as the same. Um, and I just thought that that was, that was super poignant. Cause it's like, it, not that, you know, they obviously they're humans and, and the Arcanics and the ancients are all kind of on different teams, but it's like, 
everybody's just looking for their own humanity. Um, so I thought that whole aspect of this book was really interesting, which, which is another reason why it felt so familiar. It's like, this is a theme that you don't have to look to fantasy to find this kind of theme. I mean, you can look to our own current time frame and see that there, you know, this exact thing is still happening where you have one set of people that think that they are above and beyond another set of people. And so they, everything that they do is to work toward keeping another set of people down. Um, but I, I just think that this, this setting is very appropriate. So obviously this setting gets to take a, a lot more liberties. So it's a lot more violent, but it's also, um, again, like the, the artwork is just so gorgeous. It's, it's not, yes, it's dark, but at the same time, like while, while I was reading it, it, it never feels depressing or oppressive. It's, it's just a very, it's a very beautiful kind of beautiful, but violent sort of familiar story. What about you, Ali? Like, any thoughts on sort of some of the themes that come up in this? Uh, yeah, it's, you know, I think Jasmine makes a very good point about how the artwork kind of softens it a bit. I actually, like, was taking pictures of the pages because <laughs> they were just so, the art is so beautiful. In this. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's mesmerizing. It really is. Um so I, I think that definitely plays a part, but um, I would agree that this is, we would come across this sort of thing in other stories. And like Jasmine said, like our current timeline things that we are dealing with, um, but not something necessarily I've seen in comics before. So um, I think it's really good that they approach the subject um, and its importance in this graphic novel because it, you know, it's fantasy, yeah, but it brings light to, you know, other issues throughout the world that are happening, so. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I think what, like, what she said oh, about being in, bringing this kind of story to comics, like, you see it all the time in film or even in novels, like, in, in a sense, even Lord of the Rings has, you know, you've got the elves and the humans and all of these other different kind of creature races, and it's like everybody really just kind of wants the same thing. People just want to be able to settle down and, and be happy and do their thing. Uh, mm. So it is a very, very familiar theme, but you're right, Ali. I, it, I, well, I mean, uh, you know, obviously not <laughs> my, my depth of comic knowledge is not massive, massive, but it's, it's harder to find that kind of story in this medium. Uh, so right. I, I think that that's why it feels so different, uh, but familiar all at the same time. So uh, Mark and I were talking before we started recording. Uh, he was like, well, do you think that this would have worked with a different type of art? And I was like, I don't think so. I mean, there's there's lots of different, you know, different stories call for different types of art styles. And I, I, I love different art, um, depending on, you know, what the story is trying to tell. And the soft edges, the soft lighting, the, the demure kind of colors, the steampunk look, it's perfect for the story. I mean, it, it just it just works. I can't imagine this story being told in like a gritty, fast paced, like action sequence kind of uh, comic. Um, so the just almost a subdued nature of the art is what makes the book work so well to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I did say that just before we started recording. We were talking about, we're talking about the artwork now, so use the word mesmerizing earlier um honestly it, it, it completely agree it is mesmerizing just the artwork is just so phenomenal like this this artwork is just so good i would love to have prints of this on the wall um it you know honestly this is some of the strongest art i've seen in comics in in a long time and you can see why this book wins awards and um and you can see how these two creators work so well together and this is probably the beauty of comics um when you find the right collaborative team as well uh, about taking a script and turning it into this on the page um and you know there's different art out there for different types of writers um and it's hard to know just I, I love this work artwork as well and i was thinking about it how you know there's a scene um there's a scene there's a whole page where she's well there's a couple of pages where Mako's fighting some wolves and you just see her <clears throat> in silhouette in front of the moon and it's bl bloody and dark and she eats some of these wolves and <laughs> like um and it just got me thinking as well like if you were to choose the wrong artist and to go down the road 
wrong world uh, road sorry with 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 the artwork you know maybe maybe say make it too colorful you know maybe like superhero styled you know like supermans or mm. something like that or whatever this book i don't think would work i think they have actually really felt formed the perfect team in terms of actually collaborating and getting this together um so with the wrong artist this book i don't think would be as good as it is um and i think the only probably medium to put this into would well i think any other medium would be fine you could put this into a novel or even the television show or something like that but i think in the comic world the right artists um can make or break this story and mm. yeah this artwork is just yeah phenomenal it's really and it's really helped as well i think in terms of the world building uh there's a scene there's a page right i think it's like yeah, I've got it here, page 10, where they actually show the city of Zamora where, as if someone's standing in an alleyway looking up at the at the city. And um, just the detail, I just it's just amazing. I, I really do love this artwork. Yeah, it's phenomenal. I one other thing I love about the artwork is even though it's a it's a fantasy realm, the detailing that goes into the humans, you can see the diversity within the humans and the organics. Like some people have distinctly East Asian features. Some people have distinctly like African kind of features. And I think that that, or it, like, and there are several people that have sort of like distinctly Native American features. And I think that that diversity in the drawing itself is also what, what makes this book so great to me. Like when I was reading it, you could, you know, sometimes like, especially there's not much detail put into like a background character because they're only going to be in there for about two or three pages. But like, <clears throat> there's there's diversity within the you know the realm of the soldiers and and the guards, and there's diversity within the ancients and diversity within the arcanics, and it's not just like oh well, it's a talking fox or it's a talking goat. Um, it, I mean you can you can see detailing in the faces, and and I love that. I love when when diversity is in the book, but it's not necessarily a focal point, which I think is great. Like it it kind of helps. <clears throat> to sort of just open up other people's eyes because just because they're a background character doesn't mean that they have to be, you know, generic, blonde, blue-eyed character. Like, the the diversity within the drawing itself is is really awesome in this book, too. Did you guys have a favourite sort of side character? Master Ren, for me. Oh, I, 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 I was going to say the same. I love, I love the cat. I think Master Ren is brilliant. Like... <laughs> two tails and everything like he he's so good like just he's oh. really cheeky and i love his sarcasm but i get a little fox is my favorite like well second favorite i i love her she's so cute she's really cute <laughs> she's adorable she's sort of like <clears throat> the group's conscience so to yeah speak. yeah i love her yeah yeah i think the the little fox is like the little conscience of the group mm -hmm. where i think the cat master ren is I don't know, like the problem solver, and you know, he kind of yeah, like cheeky, but he's like you know, the he's, brain, and then the brain, like yeah, yeah, the right. brawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's like a good collaborative team they've got going. They're kind of you see this actually in a lot of stuff where team in, in comics, TV, whatever, where a team comes about, but it's not. It's more like not everybody decides to be a team, like mm -hmm. in 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 media, like they kind of become a team through necessity, and they have become a, a team and it's quite a cool little team i quite like it like uh, and it's an unusual team it's not you know it's not made up of like you like we've been talking about this is quite a strong female led book um written by two strong females and drawn by a strong female and you know um you know you've got basically just pretty much a, a, a female team running around and it's quite and what i like is it's unique in terms of it's not got your dashing hero with a sword and uh, mm -hmm. yeah male male hero of sorts sorry, i meant to say is it is made up of you know and and it's not all humans it is quite unusual characters like master and the cat and then the little wolf and then you've got maker the arcanic um half human half ancient and um yeah just i, I do love the little little team i love that whole sort of because it, it is a bit i, I feel it's going to be like one of those on the road type books like adventure books and you know you've got this nice group of people and yeah master ren i think is brilliant so and, uh, <laughs> i thought you might like master ren ali as uh, <laughs> uh the cat uh, yeah, yeah, yeah the cat <laughs> uh, uh yeah i love cats but um i i thought that he kind of set forth a lot of knowledge um and i really like <clears> that uh, 
um, that he was really trying to help me go along. Um, I thought that was great. I, I like the kind of reluctance with which this team came together. Like yeah. Micah kind of acknowledges sort of halfway through the book. She's like, I really have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I, I thought this was a good plan. This turned out to not be such a great plan. Um, and, and she kind of fights the help every, every time it's offered. And then eventually she, she kind of reigns in the thing inside of her when, when that hunger comes up and she's like, you will not touch the fox. Like, uh, you know, I, I took that kid, but I'm not going to let you take the fox. So uh, I think I, I, it's almost like the A team, like to be super cheesy. Like, I love it when a plan comes together. Like this, yeah. these were, a, it was a ragtag bunch of people that were together by circumstance. And it was just kind of, well, I mean, we're here and we're still with it. So let's make this work. Uh, and even by the end, they managed to turn one of the ancients from the, from the court of dusk to lie to his own commander about what happened with the dirigible or the air balloon or whatever it's called um that they stole when really <laughs> he was like here take my ride <laughs> um so like even even by the end of the book you can see them strengthening as like a a group unit and them being compelling enough to start turning other characters to their cause so that's that's part of the reason why I'd be really really excited to keep going with this to see how this all plays out in this in this big wide world. Yeah, and one of the other things I want to talk about was like the mystery from from the very beginning where she enters um, the city of Samara and as she's on her way out, well, while she's in there, she finds a piece of a mask, which I'm assuming as the as the story goes on we'll find more of these pieces of this mask um but what i loved was as they were going out the secret entrance she notices on top of the fireplace a picture of her as a child but it's the whole picture and she had half the picture already um so she didn't know who the other people were in the picture um i thought that was pretty cool that she was given this half picture by somebody she knows um and you know so, you know, I uh, don't have to go into that specifically, but she's got now got the whole picture, and the whole picture shows two other people who she doesn't know who they are. She can't remember them because not everybody can remember a thing when you're a child. Mm-hmm. And later on in the book, she's um, put into this uh, sarcophagus where her, well, we haven't mentioned this, but she has this sort of internal um, uh, god who she's kind of fighting with uh, throughout the book. Um, and they have to come to a compromise to try and work together. And when she's in this sarcophagus, they're going through her memories as well and sort of showing her her origin and and showing her sort of with the God and, and also with her mum as well. And that kind of leads into them going to, when, when the book ends, to go and look for these other two people who are in this book. Um, yeah, I, I sort of... I love I love how this book's got so many things in it, but I, I, I love the mystery part of it. I want to know what's going on. Yeah, I, I thought that was a nice touch with the picture um, and how she found, you know, the whole picture um, just added to the mystery for sure. I think one of my favorite scenes around the the photo is toward the end when <clears throat> when Pippa is looking at the, or Kippa is looking at the photo with her and she's like, well, who are those people? And she's like, oh, I have no idea. She was like, well, what does the back of the picture say? And Micah's like, yeah. what? <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah, people write on the back of the picture so that they remember what's in the picture. And sure enough, like like every parent and aunt and grandparent has ever done, like you flip over <laughs> the back of the picture and sure enough, it's a name and a date and all this information on the back. But at the same time, it was, it was one of those sequences where <laughs> Micah was like, I am so not cut out for this. Like these, this is something so normal. And, and little Fox was just kind of like, Oh, flip it over. Duh. And she's like, <laughs> and, and that never, ever occurred to me. She's like, I don't know how to, I, she, she kind of acknowledges that she doesn't know how to fit into society. Um, but I, I just love that. Cause it kind of showed just how much she's struggling with herself and her identity and trying to figure out, what the hell this thing is inside of her and and why everybody is so like hardcore to make sure that she is caught um so i just i love that one of, one of my favorite tropes in like all of media is people out of place in a certain time so the fact that the little fox was just like oh 
flip it over like I'm sure there's information on the back of the picture because that's just that's just how it's supposed to be and sure enough it was and she was just like that never ever ever crossed my mind you know that, that like um, that moment as well that made me think of um you know you mentioned Skyrim like there's so many games like Broken Sword or even, even Spider-Man where you just pick stuff up and you and there is a button there's there's normally like once you pick an object up there's normally a button it says flip it over flip mm-hmm. it over and there's always a clue on the back yeah like, always like yeah. it's the hands down thing you do <laughs> flip it out flip it over yeah. like, uh, I guess to be honest makers too busy trying to kill people like um so <laughs> like, like, rather than worried about the clever stuff but then that's where like a good collaborative team comes together you know you see this in so much you know even if you watch Doctor Who TV show like she's always got Doctor Do- she Doctor Who uh, is a she at the moment always as an assistant um, with them because they bring something else to the dynamic mm-hmm. of, the, of the team and yeah no I, it, although Maker is the, the, the star of it you always have a star it, the collaborative team is brilliant do you know I was just thinking as well I don't know if you guys have um, I don't know actually I know Jasmine hasn't read or watched um, any of his dark materials or read Northern Lights Um but at the end of the first Northern Lights ends with all the characters in the hot air balloon after like a battle and flying off into the sky. And that's exactly how this book ends, like the first volume. I think it's quite a nice way of ending it with them heading off into the sun. Yeah, it was well, a bit... that, the whole air balloon thing reminded me a lot of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender because the, the fire, fire Nation uses those balloons to kind of travel around to the different, uh, different areas of the world. So, yeah. Uh, it's it's funny to me though how this whole like air balloon travel is such a I don't know the, I guess the the more I read the the more I see it and I'm just kind of like when when was that a thing like when <laughs> when was I don't know it's 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 weird to me the whole air balloon it's like if you can if you can make it that far couldn't you find some better way to make this work than than a dirigible I don't know I think air ballooning kind of helps set the scene of where they are. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they're not going to get in a Ferrari. Like, well, I mean, like, but they could, right? Like, um, I don't know. I like the air ballooning thing. It's quite cool for the setting. Um, yeah, I mean, but... I guess it gives it another dynamic. There's a point where uh, when the ancient comes to take them up, up through the mountain pass, he has wings, but he's riding a horse. And she's like, wouldn't it be easier for you to fly? And he's like, well, yeah, it would be easier for me to fly, but flying makes me tired and it's easier for me to keep an eye on you if I'm on a horse. So. Have you guys ever been in an airplane? No. I have. Have you? Yeah. No, I haven't. Like, I, now now I want to. Um. Uh, I did. It was, it was scary, kind of, but it was also really amazing. Uh, we went up at sunrise, so it was... It was Where really was this? Of- was uh, I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which they're okay. kind of famous for. I think they're like second in the world behind Turkey as far as like their air balloon, the hot air balloon stuff. Uh, except at the very end, our basket flipped over when the oh. operator got out. So he set it off balance and, and the basket flipped and then everybody fell on top of everybody else. Uh, well, take thankfully, we were already on, on the, the ground. ground. On the ground. <laughs> <laughs> like, like. Yeah. I was gonna say if he got out, it wasn't midair. So, no, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, I hadn't even thought about that. Oh, makes me makes me go funny. Uh, like one one <laughs> one day one day I'll get in a hot air balloon. That is something I would like to do. But, yeah, I mean, um, I, I would do it again. I I would. Um, I would just you know pay more attention once we are on the ground next time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ali, would you carry on reading this? Yes, absolutely. I'm actually surprised at myself that I haven't um actually got now that we're talking about i'm like i need volume two (laughs) but yeah it was really good like i said i had that one gripe with you know the fact that i i thought things could be explained a little bit better on Mm -hmm. you know arcanics and the ancients but it's just it's just the first volume and and like you guys said it's probably going to be explored in more depth like going through the volume so um i'm definitely going to continue reading this one I think they acknowledge that that was a problem because I think by the third, the third chapter at the very end of the chapter before the next one starts, there's this two page spread with like cats. It's like the, oh, yeah. the history of the cat going through like, and he like gives this brief explanation. So like, yeah. I think we get three of those as the books progress, but yeah. Uh, I, I thought that was an interesting way for them to kind of throw in the background information because they're doing so much heavy lifting, doing, doing this world building for like telling the story itself, that it's yeah. nice to kind of have this complete aside where it's like, oh, 
like oh you threw in a historian that is kind of just <laughs> explaining how things are going like that was that was cute but that was definitely helpful yeah definitely yeah that yeah that did come in halfway through that was a bit weird because obviously yeah. reading it in one sitting um well re- reading it not reading it monthly reading it all sort of yeah i read it over i read it over two days actually i read half um yesterday and half today and like yeah suddenly this historian rocking up halfway mm-hmm. through i was a bit <laughs> like what's <laughs> like, yeah. but it was a good thing maybe maybe that was based off feedback or something like that because it was quite a lot of information being dumped yeah. on you and that's probably the only downside about this whole thing is how complex it is however that probably in a sense it could be reversed that actually that's a positive as well Mm -hmm. how how much they must have built this world and planned it before they even started writing it um you know the the thought and attention to detail um and you know that i can imagine both um um, marjorie and um sana probably really spent i don't know months probably figuring out the logistics of this world uh they probably had a story but before they even started the story they built a massive world um and then they obviously want us to get into that world and the characters so that that is something going into this book is you have to get to know main characters and a brand new world all at the Mm -hmm. same time it's not built on something now you know it's not set in 2020 in a world you know like london new york Los Angeles whatever places where we know already it's a brand new world and that that's probably its only downside initially but longer term I think it is a benefit because it is a it is a beautiful lovely world to get into mm-hmm. now I cannot imagine having read this single issue at a time I no. I don't know how that works with this massive massive world building um so I think reading the collected first volume was immensely helpful because it gave you the opportunity it gives you a big enough chunk of story of world building of background of foreshadowing that like you definitely want to keep reading i I don't know i i'm i'm very intrigued by this this world that they've built and i am definitely interested in this mystery uh a lot of the mystery is around this sort of war that happened and the war ended with this massive explosion that just sort of instantly killed so many people. Um, But nobody knows exactly what happened. So the humans say that the ancients and the Arcanics kind of set off this bomb and the Arcanics were like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we did. And then you get later in the book and, and someone reveals like, yeah, no, we have no idea what that was, but like the humans think that we did this. So we had to keep up the lie. And so you get to the end and you're like, wait a minute, you didn't do it either? Like, well, then what the hell was that explosion? Um, so it's it's done a really, really, really good job of keeping my interest peaked. So uh, I, I'd be super, super excited to keep going with this book. Yeah, I'm going to do the same. I well my parents asked for ideas for Christmas I did ask them to get me book one which is the first 18 issues so but obviously because of things that are going on over here um we're not allowed to see each other uh because of uh the current rules and tier systems that we have because of the current pandemic so hopefully as things ease maybe we will have a second Christmas at Easter or something like that uh my little sister I said little she's 30 uh lives in London and she was the most upset that we couldn't see each other so um she's asked if we can do Christmas too when we're allowed to meet up mm-hmm. um she even said can we get the tree out we've like maybe not the tree but like, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, but maybe maybe we can have roast dinner and have presents and stuff so um Anyway, yeah, no, sort of tie up the review. I think we all really enjoyed it. We thought it was a bit complex, but we all really loved the the world building and the characters and the artwork, and we're all going to carry on going with it. So, um, yeah. And I will no, say, I, like, at the very end, at the on the uh, back cover of the book, it mm-hmm. has, like, Marjorie talking about the story and where her inspiration came from. And she specifically mentions, like, her grandparents, her Chinese grandparents have seen war. And she said it wasn't the war that was the hard part. It was surviving after the war that was the complicated part. Um, And that reminded me a lot of when we read Mouse, which was the story of a Holocaust survivor. Um, And it just sort of put things kind of into perspective. Like you're telling this this grand story and you're doing a lot of world building, but at the same time, it, it is kind of showing how hard it is to be a survivor versus if you had just kind of 
you know, done everything and gone out in a blaze of glory in the war. Uh, so I think that the whole survivor, survivor's guilt or survivor's remorse kind of thing, um, I think that's a super interesting angle to kind of be telling the story from. 100%. Um, so before we finish up, Ali, uh, have you got anything coming <laughs> up that you'd be able to check out? Uh, yeah, I'm rewriting my Enchanter series. Um, so that's exciting. I have a lot of new plot points that's going into that. And next up, I will be reading The Magic Order and The Old Guard, like we talked about. So Yeah, yeah. What made you want to rewrite the Enchanter series? Um, there's a lot of things that I didn't initially write in it because I was a new writer and I didn't fully comprehend like what story needed to include um so i'm just including some some different things and um we'll see how it goes <laughs> when do you you got goals and when you want to try and get that out or? um probably towards the middle to the end of this year okay cool well good luck and let us know when it's ready Thank um you. and where can people find you online um, I'm on Facebook at Ali B the Writer and on Instagram at Love Life Liberation. Brilliant. And um, you can follow Ali there. Um, next week, we're back after our two week break from holidays. Um, we are reviewing the second season of the Indoon Chronicles. Uh, we will also be picking up a few future state books from DC and reviewing the next Batman issue one. I know I'm going to be grabbing a couple of others as well, like Swamp Thing and Wonder Woman. Uh, so you'll probably hear my thoughts on those as well. And um, Jasmine, are you getting any others or are you just getting Batman? I'm very excited to pick up the Joel Jones Wonder Woman. That's going to be following Yara Floor, um, a totally yeah. new Brazilian Wonder Woman. So I'm very interested to see how that goes. Yeah, I... I hadn't put it down but i messaged my comic guy earlier saying actually can i grab wonder woman <laughs> um and just a little fun fact she is making a cameo in death metal issue seven which also comes out this week <laughs> so um uh, yeah uh, next month um i'm oh, actually going just when you carry on so next month, uh, we are going to be joined by Darian Donju uh, for our Late to the Party Book Club, where we will be reviewing March Volume 1, which is the John Lewis comic about the civil rights movement. Um, so be sure to check us out for that. You can also follow us on social media. We are Geeks and Niche on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can get this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Google, Apple, Spotify, Podbean. We are everywhere. So please give us a five-star review and share with your geeky friends. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you next week um, and next month also for March Volume 1. Bye. Thanks, Ali. Bye.